Good morning, students. Once again, I want to welcome you to our lecture or our lesson on methods of teaching DSS mathematics, DBS 356G. Yesterday, we talked about the circumference of a circle. We looked at how we can determine the area of a circle. After that, we also considered some geometric uh, features where we talk about points, we talk about lines, we talk about line segments, we also talk about rays. Now, I want us to continue from there, and this morning our focus is going to be on plane shapes and solid shapes. Now, before I move on, we've been hearing of the term plane shapes and then that of solid shapes. It is my expectation that when we are done with this lesson, you will be able to identify or tell the difference between plane shapes and then that of solid shapes. And then be able to identify some of these examples, examples of plane shapes and that of solid shapes. And even teach our kids how they can find some of these things in our real world, in the real world, the, the real life environment. Okay? Because we expect that whenever we teach our kids in the classroom, they should be able to take whatever we have taught them to the outside world. And that's what we talk about transfer of knowledge. And so our focus is going to be on that. Now, what do we mean? by saying that this figure is a plane shape. When I talk about a plane shape, we are saying that it's a closed two-dimensional or flat figure. It's a closed two-dimensional or flat figure. So we can talk about examples like triangles, we can talk about squares, we can talk about rectangles, we can talk about circle, we can talk about kites, we can talk about trapezium, we can talk about rhombus, and the other shapes. So those shapes are what we call the plane shapes. They are two-dimensional. When I talk about two-dimensional, it means that they have two dimensions. They have the length or they can have the width. They have only two dimensions. And for plane shapes, we can only calculate their area. And so in most cases, you notice that they can ask you to determine the area of a circle. Remember, we talked about how we can demonstrate to kids how we can get the area of a circle. We did that yesterday. We can also talk about even how to determine the area of a triangle, the square, the rectangle, which we are going to do in our subsequent lesson. How to determine the area of a square, how to determine the area of a triangle using that idea to determine that of maybe half you have a rectangle, how do we use that one to determine the area of a triangle? We are going to do all those things. Okay. But like I said, our focus today is going to be on plane shape. So, like I've said, a plane ship is a close two-dimensional or flat figure. And we are seeing that examples are triangles, we can talk about squares, we can talk about rectangles. We can talk about circle, we can talk about kites, we can also even talk about trapezium, we can talk about robots, we can talk about the parallelogram. All those things are plane shapes, and we can find the area of these figures. But when we come to the solid shapes, the solid shapes are three dimensional. They are three dimensional. And they will talk about the fact that they are three dimensional, it means that they have width. We have the length or we have the depth, and then we have the height. So they have width, they have the length, and then they have the height. And so that's why we talk about the fact that they are three dimensional. Okay. Now you notice that these solid shapes are developed out of the plane shapes. And so you notice that when we talk about other plane shapes, the plane shapes can be used these solid shapes. Okay? 
And so when we talk about solid shapes, we can categorize the solid shapes under three main headings. We can talk about the prisms, we can talk about the pyramid, we can talk about the spheres. Now, if you are going to class to teach the kids these solid shapes, most of them are common in our environment. So, we can draw or we can model some of these things using cardboard, which means that if you want to teach the kids these solid shapes, then it means you have to go to class with examples of solid shapes. So I have with me here, this is a solid shape. I'll tell you why it is a solid shape. Okay? This is also a solid shape. I think you have seen this one before. This one looks like something. You have seen those things in your environment. This is also a solid shape. In fact, this one is like this one. This is like the middle thing that I've shown you. This is a solid shape. Okay? It looks like a box. You can tell that. A chalk box that we know a fan that we have been seeing. This is also a solid shape. Okay? This solid shape, you say, is like the Maggie cube or the sugar, sugar cube. Okay? This is also a nice solid shape. Look at it. It's a solid shape. Okay. So we can teach these concepts by showing the students most of these solid shapes. So like I said, we can put them under three main headings. We said we have the prisms. We have the pyramids. And the third one is the spheres. So I'm going to take them one by one. And then for each of the category, or for each of the type, we consider those examples. So let me start with the first one. Let me start with the first one, which is the prisms. So what do we mean by prisms? What makes them special <coughs> apart from the other? We are saying that they are solid shapes which have uniform cross sections. They have uniform cross sections. They have uniform cross sections. And why are we saying so? We are saying so because if you look at any of the prisms, the base, the way the base is formed, depicts the nature of the shape. The way the shape is formed depicts the nature of the shape. So we are saying that they are uniform process. We are saying they are made up of pile up concrete. They are made up of pile up congruent plane shapes. Made up of pile up. They are made up of mm -hmm. pile up. Congruent plane shape. Like I said, the solid shapes are developed out of the plane shapes. So if you have a particular plane shape, the way the plane shape is going to be formed is going to be determined by the way the solid shape is going to be formed is going to be determined by the plane shape form. 
That's why we are saying that for the present, they are uniform processions. And so, if you take a look at this shape, it's one of the prisms. This is what we call the cube. The cube is a prism. If you look at it, you will see that it has a square base. The base here is a square. And the way the base is defines the faces of the shape. If you look at the base, it's a square. And the faces are also square in nature. Okay? Let's look at this plane shape. Uh, this solid shape. This one too is a prism. And it, you can see that it has gotten a rectangular base. So the rectangle here, if you look at this side, the length here, is building this shape, this side. This one here is building this face. And then what is here is also building that. So the way the base is formed, Determine the nature of the ship. The power up, that is power up congruent formation. Now, so we can see that the cube is a prism. We can see that the cube body is also a prism. And then the other one we can talk about is a cylinder. The cylinder is also a prism. Look at it. It has a circular base. It has a circular base. And the circular base here shifts the solid shape. So that is how it is now. So the cylinder is also a prism. You can mention some of them. Them. Okay? And so if you have taught your kids something like this and you have shown them some of these examples, you will notice that you will notice that after you have taken them through this, they should be able to tell you examples of these things in their environment. Examples of some of them in their in their environment. Okay. So now, what example can we get from this cube? They will tell you you have the sugar cube, you have the magic cube. What example can we get from the cube board? They will tell you we have a box, chop box. Mommies have gotten their trans where they put their Globes in those things, they have it. Then the cylinder. We've seen middle things, we've seen middle things, we've seen other things which look like the cylinder. We'll mention some of these things today. So we have seen that some have some of the prisms have gotten polygonal faces. Polygonal faces. And others to have the circular face, circular. Why don't you have polygons? You understand what polygons are. Okay? So, depending on the base, you can get it. So, look at this. It's a polygon. It's a four sided figure here. It's a polygon. And so, that has come out with. This shape. This one too is a four sided distance, the base. So you can see that that is giving us the cube. But the cylinder has a circular base. You will notice that the cylinder has a circular base. And that is giving you the circular face that we can find. And so that's about the prisms. Now, let's talk about the second one.
Pas des calculs en main. OK? So in the class, if you want to teach pyramids, you can talk about the famous Egyptian pyramid. You can show some of these pictures of the Egyptian pyramid. Tell them some of the history of the Egyptian pyramid. Okay? Then display models. Bring a lot of shapes, a lot of solid shapes that are pyramids. Bring some to the class. Put some on the table for the students to see. And then you can also take them to the outside world. After they have identified some of the shapes, take them to the outside world. Let them mention some of the shapes they see in the environment that looks like the pyramid. Okay. And so here, I have with me here a common pyramid. Okay. I have with me a common pyramid. And for the pyramid, that one is molded in such a way that they all piled up to a certain tip at the tip. They will end at an edge. Okay, they will all form the end and the edge. So you can see that this one has a circular base. So the nature of the base forms the face and it form the face and it is at the tip, it comes to the tip of the sheep. So you can look at the sheep. And so, let's look at this one too. This one too is a pyramid. Uh, this one is a, is a rectangular pyramid. Why? Because the base is rectangular in nature. And you will notice that if this base is rectangular in nature, then it is forming the base. This is the rectangular, this is the length. It is coming here. The width is coming there. Here to the width is coming there. And they have all formed at the top here. You can see that they have come together to form something piled up at the top. And they have a, an apex at the top here. That is it. This one is what we call the Hexagonal pyramid. Hexagonal. Why do we call the hexagonal? Because the base has four, five, six, six sides. Hexagon. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And you can see that it develops up to the top. So one, two, three, and they will all come together to form at the top. That is the hexagonal. And we are saying that the name of the pyramid is going to be determined by the, the, the base that takes it. Okay. Now, if you go to the real world, the students who mention something like the Christmas hat, with the Christmas that they have this hat, the one that the Father Christmas has been wearing is a Christmas hat, and that one looks like the pyramid. We can also mention what we call the summer hat. The summer hat. That one too is there. Now, once it has a circular base, the circular base one is what we call the cone. So this shape is a cone. This shape is a cone. Okay. This one, I'm going to explain this one as the rectangular pyramid. Why do you think so? Because it has a base to be rectangular in nature. We have that one to be the rectangular. Okay. And what I showed to you, I said a 
is a hexagonal pyramid. Hexagonal. Because the base has six sides. Hexagonal. Now, there's a special pyramid which we call the tetrahedron. And it's a special pyramid because it is a pyramid with a triangular base. But not necessarily a triangular base, but we are seeing that the triangle that is forming the base is an equilateral triangle. Which means that that one has all the sides of the triangle being equal. And that one is what we call the tetrahedron. So that one is uh, a triangular pyramid. The speciality here is that that triangle is called the pilata. So in effect, this is what we call, or these are some of the examples of the pyramids that we can mention. And like I said, after we are done with this, they should be able to mention some of the things that they find in their local environment, which are pyramidal in nature. Which are pyramidal in nature. I've mentioned some like the Sala hat, I've mentioned the Christmas hat, and I've mentioned the other okay. After the pyramid, we are going to talk about the spheres. We're going to talk about the spheres. And the spheres are common. The spheres, they are common. We are saying that they are round shapes. They are round or shapes. And there are so many examples of those shapes in our environment. You can talk about the football that we have been playing. You can take a look at the shape of an orange. You can take a look at the shape of a football, a, a tennis ball, a long tennis ball or a table tennis ball. All these shapes are spherical in nature. The shape of the globe is spherical in nature. So all those shapes are also spheres. And spheres are also part of the solid shapes that we can consider. Now, when we are done with this, then our focus is now going to Teach the students how they can identify what we call the faces the edges and then the vertices of vicious. How can they identify what is meant by the faces, the vertices? The edges of these solid shapes. Okay. And so here too, once again, we want to teach such a, such a concept or those concepts. Then what we are going to do is that come to the classroom with variety of solid shapes. Show to the students, tell them what the faces are, what the edges are, and what the vertices are. And then let them identify the number of faces for each of the solid shapes that we are going to show to them. The number of edges for each of them, and then the number of vertices for each of them. And so, you explain to them what the faces, you explain to them what the edges, and you explain to them what the vertices. And we are saying that the face 
in the flat surface of a solid figure. The face is a flat surface of a solid figure. Okay? Or we can say that the size, we can also say that the size, normally they use the size instead of the face, they talk about the size. So here, the size or the face, in, in effect, is the flat surface of that solid figure under consideration. So if I have this shape, the face is the flat surface here. So this one is a face. Look at it. It's a face. This is 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 a face. So we will show to them the face and that. And then we talk about the edges. It is when two faces meet. So when two faces meet, there is an edge. So you can see that there is a face here. There is another face here. Where this face meets this face, this point, this place, is what we call the edge. This is the edge. Okay? So here too, there is a face here, there is a face here, this is an edge. There is a face here, there is a face here, this is an edge. So you show them those things. And which one is the vertex? Here too, where two or more edges meet. There is a vertex. Where two or more edges meet, there is a vertex. So look at it. There is a face here, there's a face here, there's a face here, there's a face here. They are meeting at this point. Okay? This point here is the vertex. This is a 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 vertex. So now, after you have taken through, after you have taken them through these activities, then you take any solution. Let them tell you the number of faces. If it's a cylinder, what to be the face? The cylinder has this. This is the face. Okay, this is the face. Okay, this is a face of the cylinder. Can we also say this is a face? And you also say this face. And so you take them through these activities. And when you are done with that, you show them the shape and then let them identify the number of solid, the number of vertices, the number of edges, the number of faces in the sheets. So now I am going to draw a table. And this table is going to guide us to identify that. So after you are picking them through that, you will draw the table. So you have the common solid shapes. We have number of faces. Number. Number of vertices. So my first solid shape that I want to take is the cube. So let's look at the cube. So let's pick the cube and identify the number of faces. I have one, two, three, four. Five, six. Which means that the cube has gotten six faces. Now for the same cube, let's look at the number of edges. And I said when two faces meet, there is an edge. So one edge here. Two, three. We can have one at the top here too. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the cube has gotten 12 edges. And how many vertices can we also count? Vertices. Where two or more edges meet, there's a vertex. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it has also got in the 8 parentheses. Then we pick the second one. Let's also pick the keyboard. Okay. And then when we are done with this, the students will be able to tell you the difference between the keyboard and the key. So this one is the keyboard. And so if you count the number of vertices for the keyboard, the number of faces will be the same as that of the key. If you count, you get 16. Then you for this one, you get 12. Get now let's look at the sphere. I don't have the sphere with me here. But if we were to look at a whole football, how many edges do you think you are going to get? Is the football going to get an edge? Okay, you're not going to have an edge. So the sphere is a football. Okay, for the edges it will be zero. But let's look at the face mm -hmm. for the football. You have just one hole. Is it going to have vertices? No. Because there are no edges, they are not going to have vertices. Then the fourth one, we can take a look at the middle thing. And what is the middle thing? The middle thing is a cylinder. Okay? So we have a cylinder here. Let's look at the number of faces. One face, one, two, three. So this one too has gotten three faces. Let's look at the number of edges. The number of edges. So one face, one face, one face. So how many edges? Edge one, edge two. Because this face is meeting this face. This edge, so this an edge. This face is also meeting this face at this point. So this and also an edge. And you have two edges. But how many vertices are we going to get? So we're not getting any vertices. So we will do for others. Maybe let's look at the cone. I have between a cone here. So for the cone. Let me look at the number of faces there. How many faces do you think we are going to have for the cone? One face is here. And then the other face is here. So the cone has gotten two faces. Cone. Has two faces. And how many edges do you think it will have? There is a face here. Another face to the meet at this edge. So they have one edge. Are they going to have a vertex? Of course, one. Okay. So now we can go on and go and go on. Let's look at this triangle. If you have this pyramid, can we also identify the number of faces, the number of vertices, the number of edges? This one is the rectangular, is the rectangular pyramid. Can we identify the number of faces? One, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Well, I'm not counting it. One, two, three. Four, five. So it has five faces. That is rectangular. Rectangular pyramid. So the five faces is there. How many edges? Okay. So one. Two. Four. Okay. I should change to five. I think we can count and count. And count. So I will leave that one to you as an assignment for you to go and try for the rectangular plan and all the other things.
So let's take the students through these activities. And when we are done, we go back. Now, when we are done with the identification of faces, the edges, and the vertices, the next other concept that we are supposed to teach our kids or the pupils will be the identification of nets of solid shapes. Identification of nets of solid shapes. And once again, you go to the class with a variety of solid shapes. It could be the cone, it could be the cylinder, it could be the cube, it could be the cuboid, it could be the square pyramid, it could be the rectangular pyramid, it could be the tetrahedron. All those things you can send them to the class. And then we let them identify the nets of them. And what is the nets? The net simply means when you cut open any solid shape, we just want to look at the nature, how it is going to look at it. When you cut open, okay? <coughs> So, for instance, this shape I have here. If I want to tear this along the edges, hmm? if I want to tear along the edges, I just want to look at the nature of the shape. What would be the nature of the shape? How is the shape going to look? How is the shape going to look like? If I cut open this, how is the shape going to look like? And you do that along the edges. Along the edges. So we do this and what will be the nature of the shape. So this solid shape is a keyboard. So when I cut open it, this solid shape is a cube, sorry. This solid shape is a cube. And I can't open it. This is what I'm going to get. So that if I want to form the shape back, I can just bring them together like this. And then fold it in this way. And that one gives me the shape back. So when I can't open along the edges, I'll have the shape like this. So this is a mix of Is the net of the cube. You can easily draw it here. Let me try to draw it here. It's like this. It's like this. It's like this. So, this is the net of this is the net of a cone, a, a, a cube, the net of a cube. Okay, we can look at that on the cube one. Once again, you are going to cut the things. Okay? Once again, you are going to cut the things. So that will be it. Okay? That will be it.